Uh, what I also want to show you here, though, is if you had a couple of capacitors in series, I'm just going to show you two here. I'm going to make them uh, with different size plates to help you understand this. This is C1, which is kind of a small capacitance. This is C2, a much larger capacitance. And you've got them connected to your battery. Here's my battery right there in series. And let's just call this delta V total. Well, which capacitor would have a bigger voltage drop across it? Well, we know that the charge on this capacitor, there's Q on that side and negative Q there, Q on that side, negative Q there. When they're in series, the charge has to be the same. So what does that mean about the voltage drop across each one? Because caps are quite overvalued. We keep coming back to that. Caps are quite overvalued. Here it is. Uh, Q equals Q. That will be equal to C1 times delta V1. And for that'll also be C2 times delta V2. So what does that mean about the voltage drops across each one of these? Well, let's think of it this way. There's a couple different ways. Uh, let's first think of it conceptually. This, both of them have the same amount of charge. This is a bigger capacitance right here. C2 is much bigger. It should take a less amount of voltage to hold that on there. Just like if you had a bigger cattle pen and you were trying to shove a bunch of cattle in there, and like it's starting to get full and the cattle are like resisting and they don't want to go in there, it takes less force if there's plenty of room. And just like they all just spread out onto that field, you barely have to push them all in at all. Now, if they're getting really tight in there and really cramped, you got to push that gate closed and those cattle are trying to get out. You got to exert more force, meaning you'd have to have a higher potential difference if you had a smaller capacitor to get the same amount of charge in there. I'm going to conceptually surmise that the voltage drop should be smaller across this one. I'm going to call that delta V2, where we'd see that this would be have to be a bigger voltage drop. It's a smaller capacitance, same amount of charge. It'd have to be the bigger voltage drop, delta V1. And let's see what we get over here. I'm just going to show you that C1, which is small, C1 to C2, which is much bigger here, that means that delta V2 would also have to be smaller compared to delta V1. In other words, there's a bigger voltage difference across the smaller capacitor if they are in series. Our result from this is that in series, the smaller cap has a larger delta V. And in fact, if the cap was half the size, it would have to have double the delta V. And then we can do all kinds of fun math. We also have to remember that uh, the uh, delta V total will be the sum of those two. Delta V1, which is large, plus delta V2, which is small. So a couple things to remember here. In series, bigger cap as a smaller delta V. You don't need to push as hard to get that same amount of charge on there.